Hi, my name is Karen Knight and I am the vegan amateur. Today, I am craving something sweet. I don't know about you, but as soon as I decide I am going to cut something out of my diet, whether it's for health reasons or for um, ethical reasons, um, like my going vegan is, the first thing I think about are all the things that I can't have and how I'm going to be able to deal with those cravings. So today I'm looking to have something sweet like cookies or cake and I found a recipe on trusty old Pinterest um, from the onionringsandthings.com website for something called cockeyed cake <laughs> aka the lazy ass cake um, right up my street straight away from the title of this one I don't know if you remember from the last video but with Pinterest recipes uh, I like to see how many ingredients are involved what's the time involved with making something and if I don't have to go to the store and if I don't have to wait around too long or if the process isn't too crazy to get things together and come out with the end product then it's all for me it's all for me and that's what this was so I'm gonna go ahead and get started I've done baking before and I know there's a lot of I know there's usually a lot of talk about mixing your dry ingredients together first then mixing your wet ingredients together and then putting them together I am gonna start out with dry ingredients but then I'm just gonna start dumping wet ingredients in that's enough for me simple as that I know that there are people out there that will think um, that's very controversial but I'm willing to live with it because I don't want to have too many another bowl to wash up basically so I'm gonna start with flour so I've got one and a half cups of flour I am going to go through the very fiddly step of sifting my flour even though I don't have a proper flour sifter all I have is a sieve and I got good old uh, muscles to do this so that's exactly what I'm gonna do so I'm just gonna get the flour go ahead and dump that into the sieve and get sifting this could get slightly boring to watch I made a substitution that I'm actually going to be making today because I still haven't bought the right ingredient. Absolute useless. I'm substituting baking powder for baking soda. It calls for a teaspoon of baking soda in this recipe and the ratio of baking powder to baking soda you should be using if you're making a replacement is four to one. So instead of one teaspoon of baking soda or bicarbonate soda depending on what country you're in I'm gonna be doing four teaspoons of baking powder got that because I that sounded a little bit confusing as it was coming out so one teaspoon of baking soda or four teaspoons of baking powder I have a, a teaspoon of salt in here and I've also got a teaspoon of coffee granules that's all going in I have three tablespoons of cocoa. I use Cadbury's Bourneville cocoa. That's just pure cocoa. Sugar. Substitution time again. I don't have granulated sugar, so I'm using castor sugar. Um, I don't know. I don't know that it's just such a big deal that it's a little bit finer. I'm really not sure what, you know, what the difference really is. And it didn't seem to make a difference taste-wise last time, so I'm going to continue using my castor sugar. So that's one cup of castor sugar. Like, I probably should have pre-measured more of this stuff, but, you know, this is real life. This is real life. Uh-oh. I just noticed 
a little mistake that I made. Jesus Christ. I thought this was a full cup, but as you can see, it is three quarters of a cup. So I just put one of these and two of these quarter cups of flour in. So it was supposed to, so that was three quarters of a cup and another quarter. So that means I am down by half a cup of flour in this recipe. Oh, crisis averted. I'm so glad I noticed. My cake would have been Shit. not so awesome. Okay, more sifting. Okay, Whew. right. Next, I've got an actual cup of flour, go uh, um, sugar going in. Is anyone gonna take control? Caster sugar, not granulated sugar. Nice big chunk, big chunk. I'm just gonna crush it up. Oh my gosh, I've got these like sugar bergs in here that just keep falling. Baking is supposed to be a science, um, so I'm sure I am alarming quite a few people with my methods here. No! Okay, okay. <laughs> Flour in, sugar in, cocoa in baking powder in instead of baking soda. Salt in, now we need a cup of water. Oh, I should have mentioned that I have already started preheating my oven to 350 degrees Fahrenheit or about 175 degrees Celsius. I have a fan assisted oven, so I take that down a little bit more because they run a little bit hotter. Yeah, it's like around 170, I think I've got it. All right, so a cup of water. Uh, I'm just gonna mix this around a little bit. Oh yeah, I know why they do the dry, ing dry ingredients separately. It's supposed to be so they all, it all gets sort of like distributed evenly before adding the liquid. So I think that this method of putting dry ingredients in first, although obviously, Proper bakers will also argue that sugar is considered a wet ingredient, not a dry ingredient, but that's why amateur is in the title. Amateur is in the title. Okay, I think that's pretty evenly mixed up. I'm gonna make a well. I'm not sure why I'm doing this. I'm thinking of bread baking, which I have done before. And you usually do a well for putting where you put your liquids. So I'm just gonna do that here too. Water in the well, putting water in the well. It's not usually the way it goes, is it? Okay, let's just dump this all in. Oh my gosh. Um, so those of you fancy people out there that have a hand mixer or some kind of blender, this is probably the time that you want to get that out and use it. I have a hand mixer, but in true broke fashion, it is broke. <laughs> and I haven't got, I haven't had a chance to get a new one. Right, so the water's all incorporated now. Uh, five tablespoons of oil, of nondescript oil. I am guessing that this means something that's pretty flavorless. So I'm using sunflower oil again. This is just something that I actually had in the house. I didn't go on out to get anything special. I know as far as, oh, here they are. I know as far as veganism is concerned, 
I think palm oil is a big no-no because of the impact to the environment on destroying the habitats of animals in order to, to harvest palm oil. I don't know, this is sunflower oil, so came from sunflower, so so that's okay, but I think like vegetable oil might be some form of palm oil. So I'm putting five tablespoons in, that was two, three, four, five. Okay, I also just did something that I probably wouldn't recommend anybody else do, and that is measuring over the bowl. Okay, now. Um, because I have actually been caught out by that quite a few times and accidentally spilling way more than should actually go into a recipe. So do as I say, not as I do in this situation. And don't measure your ingredients over the bowl. You will regret it. So a tablespoon of vinegar. I've just got distilled white vinegar. I don't, it doesn't specify in the recipe. Okay, so vinegar, uh, okay, here comes another substitution. Vanilla extract. I don't have any vanilla extract. I have two bottles of almond extract and the first time that I tried making this uh, it came out fine with almond extract so I'm gonna use it again because I never bought any vanilla extract so I'm just gonna use that again and that's it oh it does say here that the coffee granules were optional um, but I had them and who doesn't like a little coffee flavor there might be lots of people who don't like a little coffee flavor 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 but I like coffee so why not mmm smells almondy right so I'm getting this all mixed up together the recipe suggests using an 8 by 8 inch uh, baking pan and this worked last time I didn't measure it exactly but it was about right it worked just fine right Ooh. There goes my almond extract. My almond extract spilled directly onto this little piece of this little piece of paper towel. Paper towel. This little piece of paper towel that I had there. That was perfect. If you're gonna spill almond extract, that's the way that you should do it. Ooh. I should have let you guys see uh, what everything looks like. You can see like that. I'm going to do it that way. So hopefully you noticed that was no oiling of the pan or flouring of the pan. Uh, the last time I was wondering about that last time, and you know there were no instructions to do it, but it came out fine. It didn't stick to to my pan. As long I guess as long as you're you've got a pretty good non-stick non-stick uh, baking pan you should be okay okay so this just goes into the oven for 30 minutes and then we're done real life. That's why amateur is in the title. Okay. All right, goes in for 30 minutes and then we're done. Okay, I'm just going to set my timer for 30 minutes and then um, while the cake is baking, I am going to get started on the icing the buttercream 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 icing uh, which you basically make exactly like it would make any other buttercream but you just use a good dairy-free spread cocoa again it's just a dairy-free product that I found in the local grocery store I found a recipe for this frosting and I can't remember if I saved it. It would be a shame if I didn't, but let's go to trusty old Pinterest and see if I saved it. I didn't. Boo, past Karen. Well, 
I'm just gonna find the recipe. I just need the ratios. You literally are just putting icing sugar and the non-dairy spread together. I'm just looking, I'm literally looking for ratios. I could do a little trial and error, but it might be just easier if I could just look it up. So, uh, vegan butter. I was a little bit worried. Just a little bit worried. Here we go. Five minutes. That was exactly why I want to make this one. It's the first one that came up as well. This is from Cupcake Project. Oh my gosh, I'm having so much problems with my internet right now. So I was like totally bugging. Right, so this is asking for half a cup of the vegan butter and then one and a half cups of powdered sugar. But for this recipe, I remember that I halved it before because I didn't need that much frosting for this cake just seemed like too much and as soon as I make too much of something I think oh I'll save it and use it another time and I never do uh, I'm gonna get my butter so instead of a uh, half a cup of the butter I'm gonna use a quarter cup I don't do a ton of batch cooking only because my freezer capabilities are not so great so a lot of what I have to do involves math <laughs> and you know having recipes or just reducing the quantities um, just to be a little bit more reasonable for two people that don't have a ton of freezer space. Right, so there's my half, uh, sorry, my quarter cup of butter, butter. Right, and then one and a half cups of icing sugar. Jeez, what a mess. So instead of one and a half cups of powdered sugar, um, I'm going to be using, so one cup of half, three quarters of a cup of icing sugar. The math. I can do scum math in my head. And sometimes I need a calculator. I'm only human, I'm only human. Ooh, ooh. No icing sugar. all over the place. Oh my god. I am shutting it down. Right, I suggest um, everybody out there watching invest in some proper like dry goods holding vessels because I've got these bags. I'm literally just missing if you could just have a quick look at my my cutting board here it's just full of icing sugar because I keep missing the stupid cup come on you can do it okay so first thing I'm going to do is I don't have a load of gadgets but I do have a couple and this is something that I got a few years ago oh, let me put it on this side so you can actually see what's going on and look what it does motion is slightly dodgy but I'm not. so I'm gonna put my sugar in with my oh big clouds of sugar everywhere with my butter and then I'm gonna use my little gadget oh oh my gosh I'm making such a mess A certain little dog comes around. And decides it's a treat for him. Okay, I'm going to just try to mash this together now with the spoon first. Okay, this is just after a little bit longer. Yay! 
Yay, frosting. So now we know that frosting is pretty much just fat and sugar mixed together. Nothing super special. So I've got my frosting set. I'm still waiting for, let me just look at my timer. I've still got about 17, 18 minutes left on the clock for the cake. I am going to tidy up because I'm starting to twitch from all the mess that is around me at the moment. Whilst I'm waiting for the cake, I'm gonna stick this in the fridge as well so it doesn't loosen up too much. I don't want it really runny. If it gets runny, it still tastes really nice, but I'm gonna just keep it in the fridge so that um, it's nice and, and firm still when it's time to put it onto the cake. Okay, be back when the cake is done. The 30 minutes is up on the clock and I have let my cake cool for, it's been a little while, I had dinner and everything, so I've let that cool, maybe a tiny bit warm to the touch. Normally, I would just go ahead and ice this in this pan and then, you know, cut pieces out as and when we wanted something, but I think that this time I'm going to go ahead and take the whole cake out and then, and then ice it. We'll see what happens when I, after I start, if I want to ice all around the edges and everything. All right, so let me get a knife around the edges. I will say that the next time I do this, I'll put it in for probably a little less than, than the suggested 30 minutes. I don't know if my oven is just a little bit like super strong or something but it does look a little bit well done, let's say. Hopefully taste-wise it's okay, um, like it was last time. Hmm, I'm not sure if this is just gonna come out. It's not. So I think I'm just gonna leave it, leave well enough alone, as they say. It hasn't really cooked super evenly so it's a little bit higher on this side than it is on that side but again that's okay this isn't for a fancy party or anything like that i'm not trying to win any awards with it just trying to scratch an itch as far as my sweet tooth is concerned i got that frosting out of the fridge jimmies or hundreds and thousands depending on where you hail from some rainbow sprinkles and i think i'm gonna put those on sprinkles where are you hmm right i'm looking at these sprinkles i'm gonna look at the ingredients before aha or aha there's animal products and everything and everything and i didn't realize this so these are they're not super old sprinkles, but they're sprinkles that I already had. I didn't buy them specifically to make this recipe, but I'm not going to put them on the cake now because they're not vegan. And the thing that tipped me off to that is that I saw that we have a V on the label, which normally means vegetarian in the shop that I bought this from. And it usually is fairly obvious when a product is vegan. This is the store's brand. And if a product is vegan, they tend to sort of, it tends to sort of shout out that it's vegan. I'm vegan. Um, but I thought, ah, oh, sprinkles, what could be in sprinkles? But beeswax in sprinkles. Who knew? No more sprinkles for me. No more sprinkles for me. Um, but that's okay. It's still a tasty treat, even if it doesn't have lovely rainbow sprinkles on the top of it. I don't know how we're gonna use those sprinkles up. My husband's gonna need to, gonna have to eat them. Lovely looking cake. We are going to have some tea and give it a taste in a little bit, but that's pretty much it from a preparation point of view. Give you some reactions in a bit. Okay, it is tasting time and I have my husband Andy here. 
the meat eater. <laughs> now it's time to cut it and hope that I can actually get it separated from the pan. That'll be nice. That's a start. It would be a good start. It's going to come off. I did before. It will do it again. There we go. That looks pretty intact. Right. Mm. <laughs> Are you ready, husband? I'm ready. I like it a lot. Tastes right. like cake. Tastes right. like cake. Let me try it. Yeah, it's nice. Mmm. Cakey. Thumbs up from the meat eater. <laughs> Even though there's no meat in the cake. It's not usually meat and cake, but... Meat cakes, though. <laughs> Shut up! It's good to have your um, seal of approval. Mm. Right. So... Cockeyed cake, lazy ass cake, whichever one you want to call it. Pretty good, pretty easy. We like it. Love it. Bye for now. Have a good one.